Do you feel like your pain could be linked to stress? Are you constantly complaining of headaches, uh, sore shoulders, a tight jaw, um, or a sore neck? Well, most of us know that stress can have a big impact on our mental well-being. But did you know that excessive stress can also have an effect on our physical body and behaviours too? Hi everyone, my name is Helen and I'm an osteopath here at Melbourne Headache Solutions. Today I want to talk to you all about the physical signs of stress, what to look out for and what you can do about it. So we all have stress in our lives. It could be from things like work deadlines, uh, bad traffic, family dramas. But when we have stress, whether it's short term or long term, our bodies release certain hormones called adrenaline and cortisol. Now, these are known as our fight or flight response. So a small amount of this stress and these hormones can actually be quite beneficial. So it helps to heighten our alertness, um, it help, increases our focus and is really useful in emergencies. However, when the stress is ongoing or overwhelming, it can contribute to a number of health problems. So you may not actually realise it, but and some of the regular aches or pains um, or complaints that you've been experiencing could actually be linked to stress. So some of the physical manifestations of stress include things like frequent headaches and migraines. So both stress and anxiety can be a catalyst for headaches and migraines. The most commonly reported type of um, stress headache we see is tension type headaches. So these are often described as a band-like headache, um, which is a tension or a pressure or an ache. Um, people will often complain of pain through the temples um, and through the forehead and in the back of the skull there. Another thing that people describe is jaw pain. So stress can cause people to hold their jaws really tight um, and they also might clench or grind their teeth, known as bruxism. So that affects the muscles that are surrounding and controlling the jaw. Um, this can often be accompanied by the headaches as well. Um, Neck and shoulder pain is another thing that people regularly complain of. So muscle tension will occur when a group of muscles um, or a muscle stays contracted for a long period of time. So muscle tension is really commonly triggered by stress. This is brought about by our nervous system and how our nerves function. So the brain is continuously sending these nerve signals to the muscle to tell it to contract even when the muscle is no longer needed for use. So this can last for a short period. Um, or it can actually last for days on end. And the longer it lasts and the muscle stays contracted for, the more pain that you'll find yourself in. So this also reduces the blood flow to the muscles. Um, and that in itself can create muscle tension and painful sites within the muscles. Um, people commonly describe digestive problems. So your gut is often referred to as your second brain. So this is because of the complex nervous system between um, the gut and the brain. So your gut has, is full of um, neurons and neurotransmitters constantly sending those signals back and forth. Um, so when we're stressed or overwhelmed, um, we might experience symptoms such as nausea or loss of appetite, although some people experience increased appetite um, frequent urination or butterflies in our stomach. This is well, this all happens because our gut motility and the secretion of the fluid within our gut are suddenly increased. You may notice you may notice like right before a big event that you suddenly have to make a nervous trip to the bathroom. So that sort of thing. Um, another thing that people will describe is insomnia. So if you are struggling to manage stress, it can be really difficult to get a good night's sleep. Um, this is due to your mind being too active and under pressure. Stress-related sleep disruption is often described as a difficulty falling asleep, um, having nightmares, um, waking up in the middle of the night and being unable to return to sleep, or clenching and grinding of your teeth. So the longer this drags on for, the more that your stress becomes heightened and your coping abilities become affected as well. Um, and this kind of leads you in a leaves you on a bit of a disrupted cycle and then you give negative stress cycle of sleep um, and then this leads to the next thing which is fatigue so stress can cause fatigue which is often described as a overwhelming exhaustion um, it can't be relieved by sleep so this may start from simple tiredness um, from your disturbed sleep or it, but then it progresses to exhaustion or, and it's, the longer it drags on 
Um, another thing that you might experience is weight problems. So stress can make you gain weight and make it much more difficult to lose weight. So this occurs for a number of reasons. Firstly, um, stress can induce unhealthy um, eating behaviours or drinking behaviours um, and it also makes us crave sugar. So this sugar craving is due to the rise of cortisol and adrenaline in the body. Um, so this causes glucose to release into the bloodstream. And when this is prolonged, you crave sugar in order to get that quick energy boost. Your body then tends to store the excess sugar. And it's mainly stored as abdominal fat. Um, and that can be really difficult to shed. Furthermore, um, the high levels of cortisol actually slow down your metabolism, so it makes it even more difficult to lose weight. Um, people might also describe skin conditions. So skin rashes have been known to occur with stress. Um, so this is due probably to the um, release of extra chemicals like neuropeptides and neurotransmitters during times of stress. Um, so these chemicals then change how your body responds to things and it causes sensitivity, inflammation and skin discomfort. So what can you do about it? Well, uh, introducing relaxation techniques is probably one of the best ways that you can um, help yourself. So um, some really great stress relieving activities have been found to reduce muscle tension, relieve the headaches and migraines, and improve sleep and digestion, amongst a, bu a bunch of other things. So some ways in which you can manage your stress are by talking about your worries to somebody that you trust, um, winding down at the end of the day. So if you've had a bu busy day, you Get yourself um, in a cycle where you can wind yourself down uh, towards time to go to sleep. Also staying off alcohol and caffeine before bed or later into the afternoon and turning off electronics. Um, you could also exercise daily, which has been known to be really beneficial uh, for stress and sleep and general well-being. Um, eating a good diet, so maybe sticking to um, like a sort of paleo type diet or in, in very well-rounded diets are really good. Um, if you notice that sometimes certain foods like things that can contain caffeines um, or like histamines or those sorts of things, they can be quite inflammatory and you can create stress as well. Um, also make sure that you take time for yourself. So making sure you're taking a break. Um, either this can be from as little as taking like a lunch break or a coffee break during the day or as big as taking holidays or even micro holidays um, are really important for our general well-being. Um, another thing you can do is to practice some mindfulness or meditation. Those are both really useful um, in reducing stress. Because um, addressing your stress can be the key to reducing a lot of your pain and discomfort. So if any of this resonates with you and you want to find out more about what you can do um, to help your headaches and migraines, then please get in touch with us here at Melbourne Headache Solutions or you can drop us a line below. Thanks.